Let's get straight to the point. Today we're going to be talking about maximum material condition or MMC and how that's applied to clearance holes. So to convey the concepts today, I actually wanted to use an assembly. And this assembly is shown here using this section view. Here I have a bottom plate where I have quarter 20 tapped holes. I have a top plate with quarter inch clearance holes. Then I have my fasteners coming in and threading into this bottom plate. This essentially clamps the two pieces together and this is a pretty common mechanical design situation. Okay, now I take this top plate and if I look at the top view, you can see that here. I've got my plate, I've got my four clearance holes, I've got my clearance hole call out, and then here I've got my positional tolerance I have applied. Now, what is MMC? What does it do? How should we use it? When should we use it? The first thing is, what is it? MMC is actually this symbol here. It's an M with a circle around it. And what you're doing is you're saying that this tolerance value is only an initial value that's only applicable when this clearance hole is drilled or machined to its MMC condition or its maximum material condition. Any deviation away from its maximum material condition, you add that deviation here to this tolerance value. So, what is the maximum material condition of an internal hole feature like this? Well, think about it like this. What we want to know is, if this part is machined, and this hole is drilled, at what size that this hole is drilled will this part have its most or maximum amount of material? If you think about it, this hole is going to be drilled to its smallest to achieve the maximum amount of material for this part. So, for internal features like clearance holes, your MMC, your maximum material condition size, is going to be your smallest size. For external features like the width of this part, your MMC size is actually going to be your largest size. So as that width gets bigger, this part will have more or maximum material, and so the largest size is going to be your MMC size. But what we're interested in is this clearance hole right here. So we've invoked MMC. We know that this now isn't a static fixed value anymore. Instead, this is just our initial value. And then as this hole deviates away from maximum material condition, we get to add that deviation to this positional tolerance as what we call bonus tolerance. The best way to look at this is with a table, which I've created right here. Here I have the actual measured hole diameters in this column. I've listed the, all the possible hole sizes that it could be measured to starting with the maximum material condition size, going all the way up to its least material condition size. I got these two values simply by taking 281, subtracting 2000s to get my MMC size, and then adding 7000s to get my LMC size. Okay, and remember, this creates a relationship between the positional tolerance and the actual measured hole diameter that this is drilled to. So let's take an example here. Let's say this part is sent away to be machined, the hole is drilled, and let's say the inspector measures the hole and it comes in at 285. Well that's six thousandths bigger than my maximum material condition size, so I get to add six thousandths to my positional tolerance as well for an allowed resulting positional tolerance of 20,000. 14 plus 6, 20,000. So that's what MMC does. Once again, it creates a relationship between the actual measured hole diameter and the resulting positional tolerance allowed. So we understand that. What does it now mean for the geometry of our assembly, for the fit of our assembly? What we're interested in is preserving a certain clearance slash interference situation here. What we don't want is we do not want the sidewall of the clearance hole to interfere with the surface of our fastener. We don't want that. That's something we need to make sure doesn't happen. And we do that by calculating an initial clearance hole diameter. And I might cover that here in a later video, so be on the lookout for that. So let's look at a couple of scenarios to help understand what's happening with the geometry and the fit in this assembly. So let's say that this part was sent away to be machined, the hole was drilled, the inspector inspected the hole diameter and it came in at 279, our maximum material condition size. Let's also say they inspected the hole location and it shifted to the left 
all the way to its maximum allowed of 14 thousandths. Okay? Now if you look at this hole, it's shifted over to its maximum and we still don't have any interference between the sidewall of this clearance hole and the surface of this fastener. And that's what we don't want. We don't want any interference. Now let's look at the opposite end of this. Let's look at this situation here. Once again, part was sent away, the hole was drilled, the inspector inspects the hole size and it comes in now at our LMC size of 288, the largest possible. Well, we know now that it can shift over an additional 9 thousandths to 23 thousandths maximum. And let's say that it was, it was shifted all the way to the right, that maximum amount. And what you're thinking is, okay, if this is barely not touching over here, we're barely avoiding interference. If we're allowed to deviate even more in the position, for sure this is gonna interfere. But actually that's not the case. Because what's happening here is, even though yes, the hole is deviating over even more, but the hole size itself is getting bigger by the same amount of deviation. So once again, our clearance hole surface does not interfere with our fastener surface. Just to reiterate, yes, the hole has shifted over even more, but its diameter has also increased by the same amount, and so we don't have any interference between the clearance hole surface and the fastener surface, and that is critical for fit and for assembly and for function of our parts. Okay, so we understand the math, we understand what's happening with the geometry and the fits, but now the question is, why should I care? Why do I want to do this? Why do I want to understand and implement MMC, create this more complex scenario when I can just leave the MMC off and not have to deal with it? Well, there's actually several significant benefits to invoking MMC when you're trying to control clearance holes. The first benefit is you get to use that additional bonus tolerance and give that back to the machinist. Especially if this is a really tight tolerance, you want to find and a situation where you can give the machinist as much tolerance as possible to hit what you're trying to, to achieve. So, with additional bonus tolerance, say you have a situation where this hole is drilled at 285. And let's say that the positional tolerance is measured and sure enough, it's deviated at its maximum of 20 thousandths as well. If you don't use MMC, they're forced to fall back to this hard static value of 14 thousandths. And now, even though this would be a good functional part, they'd have to reject that because you forced them to go back down to this 14 thousand. Put MMC in there for clearance holes. Take advantage of that extra allowed positional tolerance or bonus tolerance. All right, the next benefit. You actually accept more functionally good parts, thereby reducing your scrap rate if you use MMC with clearance holes. And here's a really good reason or situation to explain that. Let's say once again, this part was sent off, it was drilled, and that hole came in at let's say 281. Then let's say the inspector measured the hole location, and let's say that the hole location, it came in at this maximum deviation of let's say 21. Well, if you don't use MMC, then they're stuck. They have to reject that part, because that, violates the initial 14 thousandths, this hard fixed value that you'd be forced to follow if you didn't use MMC. But if you use MMC, if you invoke that, now what they can do, put that part back in their fixture, open that hole up a little more, and now all of a sudden, they're good. They're, you have an acceptable part. It falls within the size tolerance, and now you've brought it back into positional tolerance. Okay, the last benefit, of using MMC with clearance holes, you actually allow for the use of hard or what we call fixed gauging. Now, if you're in a high volume production situation where you're making a thousand, 10,000, 100,000, a million of these parts, you don't want to generate these parts and then send a sample of them and force your inspector ins to inspect each individual feature for each part from your sample rate. What you want to do is machine or manufacture a hard fixed gauge to where you can take that part off the production line, put it into your fixed gauge, and if it fits, you know you have a good functional part. You can do that off as many times as you want. 
Then, if you get a part that all of a sudden doesn't fit, well, stop production, find out why you're getting that air, fix it, and then get your expensive production line back going. All right, everybody, that's MMC. It's a symbol. You invoke a relationship between the actual measured hole diameter and the resulting positional tolerance allowed while still maintaining proper fit and assembly, and you get all these added benefits. So go ahead and start using MMC with your clearance holes. And like I mentioned before, if you're interested in knowing how to calculate this critical initial hole diameter for clearance holes, I'm going to cover that in my video that's coming up very soon. Thank you everybody for watching, and that's straight to the point.